Well, that's uh, typical Texas Baylor for you. Uh, 47-14, and if you didn't watch the game, the score was a lot closer than it really was. Uh, Texas was up 40 nothing first half, and then we did more than take the, the foot off the gas in the second half. Uh, we didn't try anything on offense. Um, you know, Our only touchdown in the second half was uh, Eddie Jones uh, getting a pick and taking it to the house, uh, our defensive end. Um, you know, Eddie, some of you guys know, I played against Eddie. Uh, he went to Kilgore, went to Henderson. Uh, high school, you know, high school rivals, they killed us usually. Uh, so, but, you know, we hated him in high school, but the dude's doing legit uh, for the Longhorns. So he's like one of my favorite guys on the team. So great job, Eddie, repping East Texas. Um, you know, I mean, Texas did did fine. We did what we needed to do. We, we kicked some butt. Uh, first half, um, you know, first first defensive when we were on defense the first time, they got some yards. They went 88 yards. We got a pick by Aaron Williams in the second half. Great to see him back. Uh, and then after that, defense shut him down the whole way. Uh, second half, we put in like our third and fourth stringer guys. Baylor still had their first stringer guys. They didn't want to get the shutout, and we didn't get the shutout. We gave them two touchdowns there at the end of the game. Uh, garbage time, uh, but we did fine. We're, I mean, Texas is fine. Uh, that's what you want to do when you're playing a bad team. Uh, and, and really, like, and if you guys watch the game, as I said, uh, I like to look at Floyd Casey as DKR North. Uh, there had to be more Texas fans than Baylor fans. I mean, you looked at the stands, uh, the, 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 the seats that were allotted to Texas fans were full to capacity, and the Baylor side was just you know sparse and whatnot. I mean, they didn't really have much of a chance in this game. And when and when you take your best team off your uh, your best player off your team in Robert Griffin, uh, you really don't have a chance to win these big time games. So uh, you know Baylor Baylor's gonna have a tough time going. To, uh, you know with Robert Griffin, I think they could beat the Aggies next week. Uh, without them, they're gonna have a hard time. Then they've got Tech and Arlington once again. I'd pick that one of my upsets the first of the year. They don't have Robert Griffin. They're probably not going to win that game. So, um, but uh, you know, Texas, we got a running game going. We started Cody Johnson today. He got some big runs. Um, and, and and Colt was efficient. I mean, Colt didn't have a great. Day. I mean, he had a good day. Uh, I really, and, and, you know, some people, you know, I don't want to be over critical. I mean, we we killed them. Uh, but I mean, it, it, what I'm saying is the team didn't really come out as fired up, and you can't be. I mean, it's it's Baylor. Um, you know, Colt kind of looked. He, what, what I'll say about Colt, Colt looked real comfortable in the in the pocket. Uh, it almost looked like he was lackadaisic, uh, mostly because no one was coming at him. I mean, our offensive line, and I want to give props to the offensive line, uh, no one touched Colt or Gilbert when he came in at all. Uh, they did a great job. And, you know, what Baylor prides itself on on defense is definitely not their secondary, but they have a pretty good defensive line, and they were not a factor today. Nothing from Baylor really was a factor today. Texas shut them down early and killed them. So, and also I'd like to point out to Oklahoma and Oklahoma fans, uh, that's usually what Texas does uh, when we are beating a team that bad in the first half, uh, we call the dogs off. Uh, you know, I, I think you got the sense from Mac and it's just halftime interview that he wanted to come out and throw some points on, but really it went against everything that Mac's for to just just completely destroy a team when you know the game's already over. So, you know, we, we could have hung 60, 70 on them, but, uh, you know, called the dogs off, get the, get the third and fourth stringers in and give them some time to play. And usually I think that's what helps Texas out a lot that we're able to be good year in, year out, because starters come in, blow a team out, and our coaching staff is able to put in uh, the younger guys to get them some work. Garrett Gilbert's gotten a lot of work this year, so I look for next year at the quarterback position for him to be uh, pretty experienced coming in. He's already a talented guy, and uh, he's got some definitely, definitely got some college experience now. So uh, good job, Texas. Colt McCoy is now tied for the all-time winningest quarterback in college football history. Next week against Kansas at home here in Austin, uh, he'll look to break that. Uh, I look forward to being there in person and uh, hopefully get to see Texas take – I mean, Kansas is not very good. We, we Texas take care of business. But uh, get to see that milestone break, broken, but more importantly, just another step for Texas, trying to get that Big 12 championship and then hopefully a BCS national championship. Hook em horns, Texas fight. Baylor didn't stand a chance. Uh, and I think they knew that in the first place from the get-go. So – Hook em horns, Texas fight, and we'll see you guys later. And uh, see them Cowboys beat up on the Packers tomorrow. See you guys.